I always have the best gaming experience when I'm playing with a buddy. You ever see a game that looks like it would be awesome to play with your friends just to find out that it's single player? Yeah, well us too. So we put together a list of under the radar games that we have been playing together and really enjoying. So here they are. First up on our list is Dungeon Put. <clears throat> Dungeon Born. Have you ever wanted to explore a huge open castle or claustrophobic dungeon kill a couple of bosses and duke it out with some other players with a couple of friends. Here we have a PvPVE dungeon crawler where you load into a match filled with monsters and other players. Your goal is to extract through a portal with as much loot as you can carry, either by looting it from chests, killing monsters, or taking it from the corpse of another player. Once you are geared up enough, you can attempt to go deeper into the dungeon through a corrupted portal, or try to take on one of the big bosses for even better loot. But be careful because if you die, you lose everything you brought into that match. There are eight classes to choose from Fighter, Rogue, Swordmaster, Death Knight, Pyromancer, Cryomancer, Priest, and Druid. And they all feel pretty unique with their own strengths and weaknesses. So have fun making a cool team composition and go kick some ass. Next up is a fantastic game called Paris, where you venture through purgatory trying to get to Elysium and escape the confines of, you know. This game really is a gem that provides a form for countless hours of fun, and it's quite immersive as far as roguelites go. You can customize your build too, so every time you play, it's different. They also give you the option to switch out pieces of your build during your run, which is a unique feature that I have never seen before in a roguelite. I think that it's highly appreciated. This is great if what you currently have isn't working for you so you can swap out pieces and change things up. It's up to four players and although it has a slight jank vibe to it, that does not subtract from how it plays. If you like roguelites, I suggest you play this one. GTFO is a little interesting and a bit on the tougher side. If you enjoy horror and first person shooters, this might be a solid option, but I will stress this. You need four players or you're going to be in for a rough ride. When you start off, you are dropped deep underground into the depths of this giant facility filled to the brim with crazy monsters. The objective will change with each mission, but the general gameplay will be roughly the same. Clear the place out to find whatever it is you're looking for by using the combination of stealth and good old fashioned blasting your way through. Stealth is sometimes the better option here. The most fun we had is when all hell breaks loose and it's just a bunch of chaos while being swarmed with crazy monsters. So load up with a couple of friends, make a bunch of mistakes, kill some enemies and have a great time. The best way I can describe this next game is basically low resolution Diablo. It's a top down ARPG that is just a masterpiece. There's four different classes to play and you can even get a fifth class if you buy the DLC. It's just a really good game and when you get to the end of the game there's still more to play. The end game in Chronicon is very similar to the Rift system in Diablo so it's just awesome. And the great thing about this game is it's shared split screen co-op. So only one friend needs to buy it, while the other friends get to use the shared split screen feature of Steam. Yes. It's one of those games that you can sink hours into, and it's only $14.99. have 100 hours in it already, and there's still more to do. If you like top-down ARPGs, don't sleep on this one. If you like survival games, then you might enjoy Abiotic Factor. This isn't your standard survival game, though. You have most of the things you would expect, like needing to eat, drink, sleep, along with crafting and exploration, among some other things, but the setting and environment are kind of unique. This game takes place in a huge underground facility, so it's not the large open world style games you might be used to. However, it is one big connected world, just not the large open spaces like forests and desert. Instead, it's crazy sci-fi labs and portals to other alien worlds, and it's filled with tons of cool lore. That being said, there are still tons to explore and do, and you could do it with six people. We had a blast playing through this game. Even the person in the friend group that isn't a big fan of survival games had a lot of fun here. So level up, craft some gear, build some death traps around your base, and most importantly, don't forget to poop before exploring. Trip Out is one that's quite unheard of and it only came across my desk recently. It's a co-op RPG that's mission-based with weapon and armor customizations. It definitely has some parts that need polishing, but it's still better than some quadruple A titles I've played. The fact that you get to pet your spider gun and then alien it to people's faces is just absolutely awesome. You can just yeet this thing on the enemies, it'll eat them, or you can yeet it into little critters and it'll take their ability and give it to you, and you can get shields that way and missiles and so forth and so on. The tutorial is short and explains everything you need to know. We had a lot of fun playing it and we recommend it to anyone who likes shooters. Murky Divers is one of those games that's just a good time if the goal is to just Goof around and have some laughs with some friends. There are four stations to manage while you search for the main objective and avoid all the dangers like leviathans and the police. Oh god. What? That's not good. Don't hit that. What? Whatever that is. 
Oh my god. Once you leave the submarine, you are basically the cleanup crew, and your job is to clear out evidence like body parts or weird experiments from these underwater labs, all while trying to make enough money for upgrades. Don't leave anything behind though, including that sandbag friend of yours, or the police will find it and give you a star GTA style. You can think of stars like HP, max stars equals fail. Oh, and I should probably mention all the different monsters down there trying to kill you or steal your loot. It's a dangerous place down in those murky depths, so have fun yelling at your friends and swimming for your life. I know we did. I have a special place in my basement for Ultimate Chicken Horse. I love that I hate it so much because I am so bad at it. I get so salty when I play. My friends are so much better at it than I am. It's a four player platformer in which you try to win by gaining the most points. You do this by placing traps around the map and getting to the finish line. The more of your friends that die, the more points you get. Be careful though because if you make it too hard, you'll fail as well. One of the best things you can do in the game is get the spinny wheel of death. And what it is is just this wheel that spins around and it's got stuff that you can stick to it. In which each thing that you stick to it, it becomes a chaotic spinning machine of destruction. Either way, at the end of the night, you'll either be dying from laughing or dying from the aneurysms you get from your friends trolling you. The Ascent is a top-down shooter action RPG set in a dystopian future. This cyberpunk-themed adventure excels at immersing you in its world. As you progress, you'll find yourself exploring areas jam-packed with detail, NPCs, and buildings to interact with and discover, so beautifully designed that the world feels truly alive. Aside from the world design, the aesthetic and lighting really nailed the cyberpunk feel with the exceptional use of neon lights in dark areas. It's a great example of a top-down experience that manages to immerse you in its world fully, even though it isn't the traditional third or first person view. Much like other cyberpunk style games, The Ascent plops you down into a world where the corporations are the big bad guy. There is deep lore established from the beginning. You learn about different factions and corporations fighting each other over power. And as the story unfolds, you start to find your place in the bigger picture. There is a lot there for you to discover as you make your way through the main and side missions. At its core, the gameplay is a top-down, twin-stick shooter, but it's far from simple. There's a wide variety of weapons to find, upgrades to purchase for both yourself and the weapons, and abilities to plug and play with. If its rich visuals and engaging gameplay aren't enough to draw you in, the cherry on top is the ability to play with up to three other people. Sunken Land is one of those games that's still early in development, but if you can look past the pimples and the crooked teeth, we have something quite special here. It's a survival RPG, you build, you craft, you explore, you go underwater, you do cool stuff like that. You start in the Stone Age and you end up shooting guns. If you like survivals, we highly suggest this one. It's very diverse when it comes to content. We had a full day's worth playing it, so it was definitely worth the money. Don't worry, I got you. Ready? 